So this week we are talking about acceleration, which is a change in motion. And we know that objects accelerate when they receive unbalanced forces. So that might mean an unbalanced force that speeds something up. If the unbalanced force is going against motion, then it could mean slowing something down. Or an unbalanced force could also make you change direction. All right, so unbalanced forces make things accelerate. But I'm wondering, do objects with different amounts of mass accelerate the same amount? What I mean by that is, if I had two different objects that have two different masses, if I applied the same amount of unbalanced forces to them, would they both accelerate, like speed up or slow down at the same rate or like the same amount? Now, a great way to answer questions that we have about the world is to run an experiment, but that requires turning our questions into experimental questions, questions that have specific independent and dependent variables that we can actually test. So if I wanted to run an experiment where I actually test how the amount of mass affects acceleration, then I could take some object, I could apply a force to it and measure how much it accelerates. So that could be like, how fast does it get at the end of a, a track or something? Then I could take that same object and that same force, that same amount of force and increase the mass of the object and then see how much it accelerates. Again, see how fast it gets at the end of that track. I could do that with all sorts of different masses, holding the force constant, and see how the acceleration changes. So the experimental question for that experiment could be, does increasing the amount of mass in an object affect how fast it moves? Now I'm getting at an independent variable and a dependent variable. But the best experimental questions make it a little more clear what materials we're using. So for this experiment, we're going to say, does increasing the number of coins a container is holding affect how fast it travels? And here's how we're gonna set this up. Here are the materials you're going to need. A timer, some tape, and a pen in order to label your track, six coins of the identical type, any sort of empty container, I chose this food container because it's all that I had, but something lightweight and flexible, not something glass or fragile is gonna be perfect. A ruler or measuring tape and some sort of blowing device like a fan or a hair dryer. I'm gonna set up the experiment. So the hardest part of that setup was arranging my fan in such a way that it's going to be able to blow my container 50 centimeters in a straight line. I was able to have success by that by having it on this chair that I could adjust the height of. You could use a box or something to set it on. And I had to angle the fan. So if you're using a fan, just make sure that it's pointing straight at the object. If you're using a blow dryer, make sure that um, it's also just pointing straight at the object. Here's another view of my setup. I've got my fan at the beginning, right by my start line, which is at zero centimeters. It's inches on this side, but there's centimeters over here. So right at zero is my start line, the edge of that tape. And I've laid this out in a straight line and I've marked off 50 centimeters right here. So the edge of this is my finish line. When I start each trial, I'm gonna take my container and I'm going to place it right at the starting line so that the lip of it lines up with this front edge. It's at zero. I'm gonna let it go and I'm going to use my timer to see how long it takes until it reaches the front end of the finish line. So I'm gonna be eyeballing this so it's not gonna be perfectly accurate, but I'm gonna to try to do the best that I can. Okay, let's do trial one. I'm gonna turn the fan on, and then I'm gonna place this right at my starting line, my container right at the starting line, and get my timer ready. As soon as I let go of the container, I'm going to start my timer and watch the finish line. As soon as my container reaches that finish line, I'm gonna stop my timer.
Now I'm ready for my second condition where I'm going to add three coins to my container to increase its mass. So I just ran into a problem that you might also run into. Once I went on to my next condition of adding coins, I was noticing that my setup was no longer allowing me to make the container actually make it all the way to 50 centimeters. So what I've been doing right now is playing around with my setup to see what it's going to take for me to get this container with coins in it to actually make it 50 centimeters. And what it looks like I could do is instead of measuring it standing up like this, I seem to have a little bit better luck like this. So maybe there's less friction or something with the table um, when it's held like this. Or I could also lay it on its side so that the wind goes inside and catches it and pushes it. Now here's the thing, I need this to be a controlled experiment. So if I'm gonna change my setup during my second condition, then that means I actually have to go back and redo the first condition so that I keep all of my controls exactly the same. So I think my best bet is going to be laying it on its side like this. So I'm going to rerun condition number one with no weight. Collect new data. I've collected data for condition one. Let's hope that the new setup works for adding coins. Something just happened where it got caught and went sideways, so I'm going to restart this trial. Okay, on to condition number three with six coins. Hopefully I won't run into an issue and have to change the whole experiment again. Alright, I had success. So now I have done three trials of three conditions, or nine tests in all. So now that I've done this experiment, some words of advice that I think might be helpful. I think having a round container like this makes it more likely to like roll sideways and kind of mess up. So if you can, see if you can find something that's more of like a cube shape, something with flat sides. Also, the container can move pretty fast depending on the setting that you put your fan or your hair dryer on. So start off on the highest one just because that's going to get, you know, the object moving. But if it's so fast that you're having trouble starting and stopping your timer on time or like seeing when it actually passes the finish line, feel free to go down to a lower setting on your fan or your hair dryer. And last but not least, if you run into a trouble like I just did where I realized that my experiment really wasn't working for all my conditions, don't be afraid to go back and restart. It might seem kind of daunting to go back and rerun a whole condition, but as you just saw with me, it only took a couple extra minutes and my results are much more accurate because I did that.